Hello guys, now what you can see here are some pictures of a prototype for a DIY video projector that I built back in 2010. And that was only very shortly after I had heard about the possibility to repurpose an overhead projector as a kind of digital video projector for the first time. And I was instantaneously fascinated with that idea. And here you can even see some footage of an actual projection on one of my walls, so not on a real screen, and record with a very old low quality camera. And I know it doesn't look like much here, but believe me, the video quality was actually quite okay, and we used it to watch a lot of movies back in the day. And believe me, each time we had people over for a party and I switched this thing on to show a video or a picture slideshow, I was the hit. But unfortunately, about three years ago, when I moved to this place, the old projector was damaged and I had to dismantle it. But about a week ago I had a feeling that it's about time to build a second unit and this time make a proper video about it. And this time I actually wanted to make it a little more stylish and that's why I started by looking out for the best looking overhead projector I could find. So as you can see it didn't take me too long to find just what I was looking for. This is a Demolux brand overhead projector made in Germany and that would have been in the 60s or 70s I would say. And almost everything here is made of metal, all steel parts are coated and there is no speck of rust anywhere here, basically nowhere. This pretty much works like on the first day. Okay, so with a working overhead projector, the next thing that I need is an LCD, liquid crystal display. And I will take that panel from this 15 inch monitor here. It is an LG Flatron L1511S and I bought that for about 5 euros on eBay. Yes, you can get these 15 inch monitors as cheap as that these days because nobody uses them anymore for their computers. And what you basically do is to disassemble the monitor. And just a word on that, you cannot use every 15 inch monitor out there. You need one where it is possible to shine the light of the projector straight through the panel without any objects, for example PCBs, in the path of the light. But there are a lot of older monitors out there where there are PCBs fixed behind the LC panel and that will hinder the light from shining through it. So you need one where you can flex the PCB that is attached to the LCD aside. So what basically happens here is that we remove the foot of the monitor and the plastic back panel, then also this metal shield here and we find a little video board with the VGA connector for the video input and also a small PCB with buttons for the menu adjustments of the screen and then we also have the power supply board on which we find a flyback converter for the video board as well as the inverters which produce a high voltage for the backlighting tubes which we will not need here. So what we basically do, and this is a little different with every monitor, you disassemble it to that point where you can take out the entire LCD and all of the boards, but can toss away the backlighting and everything else basically. Okay, so here we have all the basic parts that we need from the LCD monitor for the projector. You know, the LCD panel itself the PCB with the VGA connector on it, the PSU and the little board with the buttons. And I have all connected this up temporarily again to test if it's still working and I'm using my lamps here on the workbench to shine some light through the panel. And this is just the regular warning telling us that there is no source attached to the VGA input. So it's all fine as far as I can tell here. And you can't say it often enough, the power supply that is lying on my bench here is directly connected to the grid right now without an isolation transformer. And if I were to touch 
any of the parts on the primary side of the power supply that could potentially end deadly. So guys, if you do this at home, make sure not to come anywhere near the power supply at all. So we have a projector and all the electronics we need. But this time I don't want to hack the projector itself because it's such a historic beauty and I really can't do any harm to that with a good conscience. So what I will do is to build a module that can be temporarily attached to the overhead projector. In that way it will be possible to use it as an old fashioned overhead projector as well as a video projector. And I'm cutting out a frame from aluminium sheets here and back in 2011 when I made the first unit I did this using a thin sheet of plywood and I guess you could also use a thick piece of cardboard for this so it is not necessary to use aluminium sheets for this but I like metal and this is my way of doing it. And in this footage I'm still in the process of correctly aligning the LC panel on the aluminium frame and I'm using these small pieces of aluminium sheet in order to fixate the LC panel in the right spot. Later on I then use some construction adhesive in order to fix the LC panel in the right spot. And of course you have to use adhesive in only such small amounts that nothing of it ends up on the surface of the LC panel where actually light is supposed to shine through. And the board that is directly attached to the display must also be fastened on the frame. And in this particular case I'm forced to do it in a quite awkward way by installing it perpendicular to the surface of the frame. But this is the only way it fits. And behind that board I install a black plastic box in which I insert the PCB with the VGA input and I drill a couple of holes through the box so that the different connectors and wires fit through it. And I also remove the original plastic buttons from the original plastic frame of the monitor and attach them to that black box so that it is still possible to make screen adjustments in the future. Next I equip the power supply board with a long cable in order to install it into its own enclosure. And I remove this little fuse here which disables the high voltage inverters for the backlights entirely. They will no longer be used. And then I install the PCB inside its own little enclosure and fasten the wire first with some zip ties and then some MS polymer. And here you can see the entire assembly as it looks right now and it is now fully functional. But there are some possible improvements that I have learned about when building my first prototype. And those are some things that I don't have the time to implement right now. But let me just mention them. When I still used the old overhead projector I had a problem with the LCD panel getting too hot over time. I used two additional fans like this here to cool it down. But in this case I have tested the new setup and the LCD panel keeps within acceptable temperatures. I don't think that it is necessary in this case. The darker the surroundings of the projector, the higher the quality of the projection will be. And the venting holes of the overhead projector actually leak quite a lot of light and you can block that using a filter, a carbon filter like this one as it's used in kitchens. In the old design I used a carbon filter as it's used in solder fume extractors and that worked even better. If you really want to eliminate the light that is emitted by the projector all around you can build a mantle like this one. It's like an enclosure made of black cardboard or that's at least how I did it back in the day and it worked really well. If you want to sit directly behind the overhead projector and don't want to have its parts in your field of vision, you can put it on the floor but set it to an angle and then also angle the screen itself. In that way you can watch without any problems and without having any parts in your field of vision. 15 inch LCD panels are cheap to have but are actually too wide for the surface of the projectors. So you could use a smaller panel like this 10.1 inch widescreen panel but that alone cost me 90 euros at least with the electronics needed to attach it to HDMI. So if you have a cheaper source for this type of small LCD panel with a high resolution then please copy a link in the comment section. Okay but enough about that. In the meanwhile I bought a used screen and attached it to the ceiling of my new room upstairs. And 
These screens have really dropped in price since I bought the first projector. I got this gigantic thing here for only 50 bucks, even though it's top notch, made in Germany and quite big. But installing this huge thing all by myself was really a hassle, but that's something that I can talk about another time maybe. So without further ado, let's take a look at the results. engineering wonder to hear the story of Hoover Dam. 